my little lobsters. Today is the wrap up of August 2019. So let's start. So I already talked about The Immortals. I reviewed it in my TBR because I had already re read it when the mo month was already started. So check that one off. That's a little better. Now I read, and then I read two and three of the Shaper Exile. I made a video about it, if you want to see it, about the whole series, my thoughts and feelings on it. Um, I personally love them. I gave them all five stars because if something really emotionally impacts me and where I'm very invested and I would happily read it again, that's a five stars for me. That's kind of my criteria. Um, a four stars was I appreciated it and I thought it was great. That's a four star. A three star is it was really good but it missed the mark. Like, I think I put that for The Immortals. It was because it was just a collection of um, loosely related short stories. I feel like for me, when it comes to wanting to read a novel, I want something really uh, very much whole. You know what I mean? Then, um, and so if you want to know about more about the Shaper Exile, I accidentally put Shaper's Exile. And when I posted it... Um, YouTube glitched out and only posted six minutes of it. So if you want all 44 glorious minutes of bookness, uh, you should check it out. I thought it was good, even though I was dead inside. But I turned out more alive by the end of it, you know? The joy of reading in books keeps you alive. Even though I look, look at me, I look very old because I went through one week of school, like back to uh, community college. I loved it, but I, right after I had three consecutive social days in which I stayed up till like midnight. So, uh, Labor Day wasn't enough rest for me. <laughs> Anyways, after I read Lolita, um, it's in the library back there. It was okay. Let's talk about Lolita by Vladimir Novikov. So the story is about a, a, a fictional tale of a character called Humbert Humbert, who is a fully grown gentleman who is a hemophile. And if you don't know what a hemophile is, it's someone who is attracted to um, people that are um, in a prepubescence. So like 9 to like 13. Like vaguely around that area. And he is specifically attracted to very young w women. Um, which he refers to as nymphettes. Like, he's not attracted to all, you know, little girls. He's very much attracted to, between the ages of, like, um, 9 and 14, uh, the very special, like, kind of, um, a bit promiscuous, like, not totally innocent young girls that are very attractive. And, um... You know, you, you can already say what most people would think is like, That's gross! Yes. But it's interesting. You know, writing from the perspective of someone like that um, really takes a certain amount of willingness and curiosity. And, um, of course, I have to commend Novikov for... Um, tackling something so controversial and using such beautiful prose that it just couldn't be ignored, you know? 
like if you want to read a beautifully written book, you, Lolita would be a recommendation. It's, it's juice. It was a gorgeous read. I gave it a four stars because according to my criteria, that means it was very good. Well done. It wasn't like, oh my god, I loved all the characters. I would so read this a million times. That's all God. It was like, that was a good book. I mean, I wouldn't want to read it unless I had to for school. Um, because here's my issue with it. Like, you can write about dark subject matter with, like, um, very morally dark characters. But the thing is, the storyline of events is boring. I gotta say it, the most interesting parts that happened were, um, okay, spoilers, spoilers, I'm gonna share some spoilers and they'll be over once the spoiler banner is gone. Alright, so if you want to read it, find out for yourself, make your own opinion. <coughs> Let's get the spoilers. But if you want to know anyway, continue. So, um, there is an event in the book where he is going to go to tutor a young lady. Um, and he stays with this other family because that didn't turn out. He was at this boarding house with this woman who has a young daughter, a nymphette named um, Charlotte Lolita, you know? And so to get close to her, he marries the mom. And there's this part where they go swimming and he thinks about murdering her. And I was like, oh boy, something's gonna happen. Something's gonna happen, yeah. But then it didn't happen and she got ran over by a car. And then they drove very, very far. Humbert picks up Lolita from summer camp and they just go on a long cross-country journey and boy is it boring 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 and then like the descriptions are fine the writing is fine but the events that occur are boring they go all across the country of course, he said, he, he, you know, does the do with her, which is illegal. And so at one point he becomes very paranoid that someone is following him that looks like a cousin. And then he gets like more and more paranoid and, but you know, it wasn't, nothing really happened until Lolita is gone. She never came back. And then later, and then Humbert's like, all these years trying to track her down and the, and the person who took her leaves all these literary references and symbolic things. And I'm like, okay, this is more interesting, I guess. And then Humbert's like, well, I'm giving up. I'm going to New York with this woman. And then he just lives with her for a while. And then, many years later, uh, Lolita sends him a message saying, Hey, I want to move to Alaska with my boyfriend. Give me money. I'm pregnant. And so, of course, instead of sending money in a mail, he drives all the way over there with a gun. So he can kill the, kill the guy. But then when he goes there the the husband is like is okay he wasn't the one that like took her or anything and so he gives lolita like a ton of money he's like won't you come with me and she's like a fuck no 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 
and he's like, oh, okay. And then he's saying like, oh, I know who took her. It's obvious. And I'm like, how is that obvious? Of course it was the dentist's son. Where did we... Wh how were we supposed to see that's obvious? And then he has this weird confrontation. Is the weirdest, dumbest confrontation with this dentist's son who's like a... A dr uh, like a criminal guy who is impotent which is relevant apparently and then Humbert keeps shooting him and the guy is like let's talk it over Let I imagine it with a Russian accent I don't know why he's like let's talk it over have a drink with me it's no big deal I just took girl no big deal she wanted to go I took her back I write poems and plays and stuff let's just talk have a nice chat and then Humbert's like, <gasps> and tells guys freaking D E A D. And then Humbert was like skedaddles, not quickly. He just he, he the guy's friends come over, and they're like, hey, what's up? And Humbert's like, I killed the man. And they're like, haha, nice. Okay. And then Humbert is like driving away, and he's like. Nothing matters anymore. And he drives into oncoming traffic, which I've had nightmares about. Not because of the book. I've, I've had nightmares about, like, driving against traffic and not being able to control the car because I don't have full control over my blah, 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 blah. And anyways, and so he gets caught by the police because of that. And he's like, I killed a man. And so... The entire story was told in the perspective of him being, like, in jail and just sharing his story. And... I don't know. Well written. The story. The events that occurred. Just, like, if you took out all the prose and the pretty writing and you just outlined what happened, it's boring. Boring. B b b b b b boring. Okay, so that was Lolita. Four out of five. Uh, read it if you want. Well written. But then I read something truly incredible. The Voyage Out by Virginia Woolf. My waifu, she is perfect. I love The Voyage Out, obviously, it was a 5 out of 5. Too good. It was too good. Oh my goodness. I loved every single one of the characters. I felt very deeply for them. I just love how she gets into everyone's head and you really understand everyone's thoughts, where they come from, and and you get, in, get invested in where they're going. And the voyage out is about this trip, this actual voyage of a ship. And the ship captain is has his um, sister and brother-in-law come aboard, and they meet um, his daughter, who has been living on ships. She is, she just plays piano all the time, and she's very sheltered, especially when, um, the Dollaways come on board. I was really surprised to see them in this. I'm like, what? I've read Mrs. Dollaway? This is them? So now I want to reread, um, Mrs. Dollaway, because, like, she seems very different between the two books, um, I know that's purposeful because she becomes more feministic in her thoughts and in her writing. Um, but you can see like the beginning evolution um, from where she was then and then all the way um, to, to The Lighthouse, which is another one that I've read of her that is really freaking amazing. But The Voyage Out is this about a literal voyage and also the, um, the, the ship captain's daughter um, voyaging out into adulthood and finding herself and the meaning of love and life and what it means to live and my god 
I cried. I cried. I literally sobbed. I sobbed. It was just that impactful of a read. And I will never forget it. It was incredible. I won't share any spoilers because I want everyone to read it. Because it is absolutely incredible. An amazing read. And I expect nothing less from Virginia Woolf. She's my waifu, what can I say? And then the book I was supposed to read after that was Reaper's Creek. Okay, so I only got, I was only able to get through two chapters. And I was like, but this was before I read all those other books I said. I checked, I, I was looking at it while I was reading The Shaper's Exile and I'm like, this is excruciating. So, I, um, so on Saturday, I hung out with my best friend Maddie, um, and I told her about my booktube and about this book and how it was just insanity. And, and then after we hung out, got some in and out, she came over and I'm like, oh, check out the book. She started reading it. And we started having fun. This is so much fun with friends. You have to read it with your friends. You can't do this alone. It is kind of agonizing or like really agonizing because like you're just by yourself and you're just torturing yourself. But when you have a friend, you can comment and talk about to each other. And we've done like, we were doing like lots of annotations throughout like she wrote some I wrote some like I think it's really fun like we're having a lot of fun writing in this so when we finish this book I think we're gonna meet next Sunday if she replies to my text um we'll, together we'll do a review video and talk about our experience going together through the book and that'll be really fun that's a fun future video to look forward to but that didn't end up getting read on my TBR. That is like, um, I guess this turned out to be a group project on that one. So now on the list, these are all the um, books on my TBR that I said on that video and the date that I'm supposed to have them finished. So I can reach my reading goal of 50 books. I need to read uh, six books each month for the rest of the year. And I really don't want um, going to school, going back to school to interfere with um, my reading journey because it's so much fun and I still wanna make videos considering that I just made this channel. So it'll be fun to continue. Like, to, like I have time between my psychology and my yoga class, which is today. Yeah. So, a book I read instead, which is already on my September list, well it is September now, so, is Annihilation. When I originally read this, I gave it a four stars. And then after rereading it, I gave it a five stars. Because it is such a fun romp. I love this book it is extremely good i love how it just gets right into it and it has like flashbacks at relevant points i really like that writing style i think it's really good to keep a fast pace and give backstory only when you start caring you know because it's like when you like start loading it up with backstory before anything really relevant happens it can kind of like discourage the reader from wanting to continue and they'll put the book down which is what I did with this one when I first read it I I'm back pretty much at the same point as where I stopped um I stopped because back then because it had finally started to get interesting but I didn't remember diddly squat about this so I wanted to reread it before I continued and um, I'm glad that I did. That was a good idea because there are a lot of pieces in this that got jumbled up because I watched the movie. Now, in the movie, um, it 
misses out on one of my favorite things about this book, and that is the psychological manipulation that happens. There's a bigger sense of mystery here instead of the kind of shock value horror creatures. The creatures in this are more mysterious and, um, oh man, they're so good. I prefer the descriptions of the crawler in here than the weird kind of, you know, it's more like an, it looks more like an object in the book and in the movie. And, and the lighthouse has more relevance in here and... I felt like the movie played around with the concept, but not w sticking to what made this book so exciting and interesting. I, um, I think the psychological aspect was way more interesting. I felt that, um, the, the tower or the tunnel wasn't as explored in the movie. Yeah, I think it all happened in the lighthouse, her encounter, but the the tunnel or the tower was such a cool aspect to it and I really liked that none of the, the characters had any names. They were just named by their job title and um, the movie tried to really humanize them and I'm like that's missing the point of what they're trying, what this book is trying to say. And how that and how the Southern Reach treats its expedition members, and just the psycholo psychological aspect of it is so interesting. And and I don't know if they have it in the movie, but the uh, flashback scene with the starfish was really really cool in the book, especially when it related to when she encountered the crawler. I thought that was really cool. Um, so read this book it is so fun you don't have to read any of the other ones like just this one it's a, not too long but it's fun it is a fun read i really like the main character she's very different than a lot of other main characters that tend to be more um more heroic and uh and uh, charismatic it's usually the typical um protagonist but this character is very uh morally gray and um and she has her guard up the whole time and she is really really interesting and now i'm reading this book so i will be going through this book the book that follows it And I'm going to be reading, this will be a different one. So I was supposed to read four, Fahrenheit 451, but my aunt has it, and I don't know if she's going to give it back. Like, give it back. It's on my TBR. So in order to give her some extra time, I'm going to read Riders of the Purple Sage. I rented it from the library book because I wanted to read a western. I've never read one before because I want to write something that has Western elements in it. And I'm not going to tell you about it. Alright? So that is what I read in August. So that's six books. Is it? It is six books. So I'm right on track. And then I'll have another six books coming up in the next one and then we'll make a TBR or make a video on the uh, on Reapers Creek if we get through that before uh, the end of the month and I'll probably make a dedicated video to the Southern Reach trilogy because I want to make um, dedicated videos on series and then on individual books I can talk about in wrap-ups or standalone books could be talked about in wrap-ups so thank you for watching <gasps> bye
go away.